logo smoke bag. And today I'm joined by Colin from Death Ray Vision. It's great to be chatting to you this evening. Your album gets released in a few days on my birthday, in fact. Um, how excited or nervous are you waiting for this unrelenting, no compromising release to drop? Um, well, it's it's feeling pretty good. Uh, we're just we're we're actually doing some shows at the moment. Um, we've just done three shows in preparation for it uh, this past weekend, and then one about two weeks ago. We have the album release show uh, on Friday, same day as the release. Awesome. So, yeah, and it's a local show, so we're hoping it'll be pretty uh, pretty intense. Sounds um, amazing. Will yeah. you be live streaming that? You know, I don't I don't think we will be, but potentially maybe a drum drum cam song or some a song, you know, for that that would be pretty yeah. cool. That'd be awesome. And of course, the world is pretty fucked up at the moment. Um, can you give us some? In the inspiration for No Mercy from Electric Eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I can probably go back to the songwriting process, which actually happened a little little bit prior to the pandemic or the outset of that. Um, from there, we were just, you know, kind of sending material back and forth, you know, during the lockdowns. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think, I think Pete had some ideas as to where he wanted, like, the lyrical direction to go. And in that process, we, uh, we, we parted ways with our old singer, Jeff, yeah. and we got in touch with Keith and that, that's, that started like when the, the lockdowns were lifted. So we started rehearsing a little bit more and, and things were really seamless with, with Keith. Um, and he really kind of fits the attitude of the band and in that, I think that vocal approach or like that lyrical approach that Pete was looking for. So Pete and Keith, I think were simultaneously writing lyrics together. Mm -hmm. um so it's really more of a take on on their worldview during that time probably and yeah and maybe not even just that time but uh you know points in life and transitional phases of life too yeah absolutely i mean there's an important message with from the rafters how important is it as you as a band to highlight sort of public service brutality mm-hmm um, that is definitely, uh, more of, uh, Pete and Keith's realm of things. But from, from my perspective, I can also say, you know, being in Boston, there was, there was quite a bit of, uh, I would say protest happening, um, yeah. around, you know, two or three years ago and it still exists today being a, you know, very liberal, um, city. But for me, I, I really just think, um, you know, if, if, if you're using intimidation to uphold the law, then, you know, you're probably losing some ground. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I can't really speak to how to rectify these issues because I'd no. be speaking out of, I'd be speaking out of school. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but that's, that's from my perspective, really. And it's, it's um, and, you know, to, to quote Keith at, in one of our most recent shows, uh, when, when introducing the song, you know, it's, it's not necessarily about assassination, but rather accountability. Mm. And, you know, we see just it's not just limited to police brutality or you know, systemic brutality, but I think we see a lot of corruption um, and a lot of people not being held accountable just because yeah. they are above the law. So absolutely. Man. I can agree more. Um, I know all the tracks will be your babies, like, but which is your favorite track today and why? Uh, probably um, ooh, it's a good one. One of my favorite songs actually didn't make the cut okay. on the record. Yeah, it's it's probably going to be used as a bonus track. Okay. Uh, it's called it's called "Only Wolves Remain." Right. Not sure what we'll ultimately use that for. Maybe mm -hmm. some kind of soundtrack or a sampler or you know, metal yeah. blade will do. Yeah. Um, that is actually it's it's just very diverse. There's a little mm -hmm. bit more of a, a darker edge to it. Cool. Um, and I really like. Um, I just really like the intensity of From the Rafters, too. Okay. Um, you know. Brilliant. Yeah. I see you've got two guitars on the wall there, so you're a guitarist as well as a drummer. Um, yeah. That's really a couple of guitars, bass. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. yeah I, I, I write a little bit. Uh, yeah. I write some awesome. riffs for Death Ray as well. That's awesome, man. Brilliant. Um, the album is a complete package from the songs to the artwork. Mm -hmm. 
do you have plans to <coughs> excuse me so again you have the complete package from song from the songs to the artwork do you plan to have that frame that you own like the artwork you know it's not that's not outside the realm of possibility yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it, so that's actually a really I, I i'm a i'm a big fan of mike's design work uh -huh. you know, he, he does i'm also a graphic designer right. uh, but in a, i do more uh, technical work and he does more of like the actual print work mm -hmm. and his and his his style is, is really killer um i do have a few framed uh you know things of my past uh -huh. um old banner right here of one of my old bands that we use on stage so yeah um i'll probably if, if we get some prints made probably do that absolutely also it would make an awesome tattoo do you not think the cover and would you plan to have that done I, I don't really, for me personally, I don't, I wouldn't be one to tattoo anything of my own bands on me. All right, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, fair enough. Um, so can you then give us the plans for the rest of the year, tour and festival-wide, and I hope for to get across the pond into mainland Europe? Yeah. Uh, as of right now, we only have two other more regional shows booked. Mm -hmm. that we haven't announced yet just in favor of our album release show coming up on Friday. And that will be in the fall. Right. Um, I know that there's some talk about, you know, some mini touring or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe other you know, outside of the region um, shows towards the end of the year. Uh, but there's no confirmation on that. Ideally, we would love to do festivals, mm -hmm. you know, particularly European festivals. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, I'll be over in Europe for a couple of festivals this summer, but oh, just, yeah. just, just going as a spectator. Yeah. Cool. Which ones are you going to? UK or Germany? Um, actually going to, for one day in Wacken. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, actually the same day, uh, Kill Switch is playing awesome. and uh, Bur Burning Witches. Um, oh, yeah. And then, yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then uh, I might also, I'll be going to some... Uh, I'm not even sure of the name of it, but it's in it's in Bosnia. <laughs> really? So, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I know, I do, I do know what I mean. Actually, it's like the new one, isn't it? Is it like it's on it's on the lakes and everything? It's supposed to be amazing. Was it? Yeah, I, know, um, I do actually know what you mean. Actually, I think yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. like an arts and culture festival of some yeah. kind. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right, so which three bands then would be your ultimate touring buddies, dead or alive? Oh, that are alive. Uh, whew. That that I have toured with and experienced yeah. Yeah. Uh, as people. Um, Crowbar are great guys. Right. Yeah, they are. They are awesome guys to tour with. Really fun. Just generally nice, nice mm -hmm. dudes. Um, and they like to party, but they're not like out of control, you know. So, uh, Kill Switch are. Uh, you know, we have toured with Kill Switch and yeah. played multiple shows with them. Uh, just obviously because of the relation with, mm. with Mike D. And so that would be a good one just because, you know, it, really because of the size of the shows that we get to. Uh -huh, um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so the third band, who else is a really good one that I've toured with in the past? Uh, it's still around. Hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of them are broken up at this point. But I'll just I'll I'll go with them for now. Okay, that's cool. Next one then. So if there was a heavy metal song about yourself, what would it be called? Oh. Uh. So metal, I'm rusted. <laughs> Love it. All right. So going back to the album, um, we you releasing any more videos, singles after the album's released? Probably. Uh, yeah. I would I would assume we'll probably do maybe something more like live based. Cool. Um, there yeah. there hasn't been any talk on it, um, but you know we've done we've already done the two videos. We got those out as singles prior to the release. Yeah. So we'll we'll see you know what comes. Okay. Okay. So next to a dark question again. Then, so if you were a musical instrument, what would you be? Mm. You know, I, I don't know. Probably, probably drums. 
maybe yeah. maybe throwing a sitar there. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's my Belgian friend. She likes to ask that question too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next one then. If your band could do a cover of any song, which one would it be? Cover of any song. Yeah. Uh, probably, well, right now we actually do uh, a partial cover of Leeway. All right. Okay. Of a, the, the Leeway intro. Um, so I, I think we would ultimately do, you know, sometimes we will jam something by like by Leeway or cro mm-hmm. you know, um, because that's definitely the style that we go for in this band. Right. So um, if anything, it would probably be Mark the Squealer by Leeway. Brilliant. Okay, man. And the next one then is four words to describe their fray vision. Oh, um, let me count here. A metalhead's take on punk. Yeah, love it. Yeah, yep. real. Okay, so there's five five questions there, fast questions. So first thing that pops into your head. So favorite album? Metallica and Justice for All. Great. Um, favorite drink? Alcoholic or non-alcoholic? Either. Um, <laughs> beer. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe kombucha. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Favorite food? Indian food. Yeah. Just I just did an interview just now with Crash Karma, and they said like the same sort of thing with the drink and the food. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Right. What's your favorite Indian food though? Is it a Bindaloo or a Dras? Or... Uh. Well, what I like about it is is just the. I'm vegetarian, so it's mostly yeah. vegetarian. You know, yeah. um, I will probably go with the bang and barda, the awesome. eggplant. Yeah, okay, cool. it's really good stuff. Awesome. Um, favorite pastime? Favorite pastime? Uh, aside from working and the band, uh, snowboarding. Awesome. Okay, and the final one is favorite inspirational person. Favorite inspirational person? Oh, that's changed over the years. <laughs> Wow. Um, it's going to sound a little funny, but I, I really have uh, recently read a couple books and uh, Abraham Lincoln's quite a, quite a, uh, yeah, quite an inspirational person, not just because of, you know, what he did um, mm-hmm. from a society, like a perspective of society uh, or a presidential perspective, but more around his articulation Mm-hmm. And how he was able to like handle certain situations, yeah, um, yeah. And, and and really dissect them in a uh, a diplomatic way versus you know by force. Brilliant. All right, thank you so much for your time. The album is absolutely banging. I love it a bit. Hopefully, you will get over to the UK on tour uh, or even to mainland Europe. Uh, do you have any final words for your fa- your fans, our viewers? Um, please check out the record. And just check it out through any streaming or on your phone. Uh, buy it if you can. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been doing this a long time. It's, uh, it'd be good to get some kind of notoriety. And uh, for anyone that is our fans, you know, just uh, look out for us. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be coming to you.